So today we're going to take a little look at time lapses and time lapse photography or hyperlapse, whatever you want to call them. You know, if you want to make something like this. Stick around, we'll, sh we'll show you how to do that. If you've been following me for a while on Instagram, you'll know that I love a good time lapse. Back in August 2018, I actually started doing a series on my Instagram called Time Lapse Tuesday. Every single Tuesday, I posted a story, 15 seconds long, and through that, I would have posted a time lapse every Tuesday. And then I built all these up into like a huge compilation of time lapses on the highlights tab on my Instagram. So if you go to there, take a look at the highlights, there's over 40 at the minute to look at, and That'll definitely give you a good idea of my experience with uh, time lapses. For the uninitiated, what is a time lapse? I can guarantee that you've seen one before. They're used in multiple shows. They're all over the internet. You'll definitely be able to see. You'll definitely have seen one at some point. But basically, what a time lapse is is it's a series of images that's taken over a prolonged period of time that condenses that time into a short, shorter video of the, the time scale. Um, you can set them up to take place over months, years even, I've seen people do them for, or you can set them up for minutes to hours even. When it comes to time limit, uh, when it comes to a time lapse, you know, they, they can vary in multiple ways, but you'll definitely have come across them somewhere on the internet. So, as I said, the majority of my time lapses last only a few minutes, but there's nothing interesting in our apartment that uh, I want to time lapse today. So, to show you some of the differences, we're going to leave and go out and hit the road, get, um, get going. So over this period of time, I learned a few things about time-lapse photography and how to pull together an efficient time-lapse without, you know, too much hassle. Uh, right from the start, planning, setting up your shot, uh, to pulling it into your edits, to exporting that final video file, depending on the method that you decide to take. Anyway, before I go into a deep rabbit hole about gear and all that shit, shooting time lapses, forget about gear, all you need really is a tripod and possibly an intervalometer. A lot of cameras have it built in, but as I'm sure a lot of people are familiar now, most smartphones can do this. You, If you go look in your camera app, there will probably be a time lapse function or a hyperlapse, they may call it. That's the same thing, basically. You'll get a, the same sort of image, or it may, it may actually just take a video and speed the video up. A lot of cameras will have this feature built in as well. You'll be able to just set up your, your intervals, set up your shot, and light, leave the camera to do it, and it'll just take the video or take the shot and export it as a video instantly. So you'll just have this video file ready to go um, out of the camera. So it may be your, you know, with my 77D, for example, it just up, outputs a 1080p image at 25 frames a second. For a lot of cases, that's just good enough. You can use that for most things. I would use it as a as a filler for um, even some of my vlogs and stuff. You'll see there'll be little scenes that were like, yeah, well, I was doing this, so I'll just time lapse it. Just set the camera up on the tripod, hit play, and let it go, let it do its thing. And you don't have to worry about any of the post-processing or any of that sort of stuff that comes to the more complicated ones. Very, very useful for that sort of stuff. You do take a hit on quality, though. What if you want quality? What if you want the best quality images that you can do? Well, this is the wonder of photography. You can shoot raw. In essence, a time lapse is just a series of images. You can capture those images yourself, and this is where the intervalometer comes in. A lot of cameras will have them built in. You can buy them externally. They're pretty cheap, maybe 40 quid, I think was the first one I ever bought. I was for like an old D3100. Yeah, you get your full sensor readout in that sort of case. So you, it does increase your file sizes. You can use, shoot full raw images or JPEG images and bring them into your editor of choice and make the video there yourself without having to rely on your camera just exporting a, a lower quality video than its full sensor is capable of. There's still a number of things you want to keep in mind when you're setting up your time lapse that will determine how long you want to leave your camera in a spot. So the first thing is you'll need to consider the duration of the event that you want to capture. So if it is a sunrise or sunset, you know, there's a key moment there that you want and you have to time that. You have to know how long it's going to take. So in essence, you may want to be there about 40 minutes before sunrise actually takes place. 
get yourself set up and shoot for 20 minutes before and 20 minutes after, you know, right the way through. And then the other thing about that is as well, even the event, it's how fast you want your event to be portrayed. If you want slow shutter speed and to take long exposures and have a long exposure time lapse, that's gonna take longer as well because you still need to capture the same amount of images if you want your time lapse to be 30 minutes long, but your each exposure is gonna take longer. So unfortunately, this is where it gets into the mathy part of it. This is where it gets a bit deep and hectic. I mentioned earlier intervals. Intervals are a big thing. <laughs> they determine how often an image is captured, basically. Um, one interval is from the start of one shot to the start of the next shot. So if you have a one second interval, it starts at the moment your camera starts to take a shot and right, that's one second until the next shot starts. If you had a 15 second time lapse that you wanted to capture and say your uh, final frame rate is going to be 25 frames a second. So you know that you need 375 images to make a fluid time lapse, to make a, a 15 second time lapse. The amount of frames you're going to play back every second. Um, so over a 15 second period, you're going to play through 375 frames. And that's where it kind of comes more into when you're doing your manual time lapse. That's a bigger feature there that you have to keep an eye on that because you need to know how many pictures you need to come home with so that you get the exact frame rate you know of course you know you can experiment with your numbers to you find a happy medium that you're happy with if i'm doing a time lapse on my canon and i want to set up just a doing the dishes in my house i'll literally set it on a one second interval set it up for usually it's a 125th of a second and i'll just let it go for you know I'll leave it for five minutes and that'll be that'll be it. That'll get enough for a, a video. You know, usually two to three second clip is all I need for that sort of thing. At this point though, I will say there are a few other things you do need to keep in mind. Um, a lot of times, same with shooting on a tripod, you want to turn off any image stabilization functions that are on in your camera. My big thing, and I've made this mistake many times, is go manual focus as well. Set up a focus point before you go because what will happen is, is you'll get this breathing those are the two things that turn off image stabilization and manual focus. At this point, you know, we're out here, I've gotten two examples from the exact same place today. Um, I've set up a shot on the auto built-in function on my camera. And the other one, I've set the intervalometer going on it as well. So we'll have a couple hundred shots there that we're gonna make into time-lapse. So at this point, for me to carry on with this video, we're gonna have to go home again. Okay, so we are back home. If you've done the videos, like the general time-lapse where the camera outputs a video file, you're pretty much done as much as far as it goes to making the actual time-lapse. But if you've gone down the intervalometer route or you've got the intervalometer built into your camera, this is the next step. Now, from here on, it's kind of everybody owns everybody's own preference, but I have like a workflow that I go through. In general, what I'll do is I come import my folder in here. I've got absolute gem of a photo. Apply my edit and then you hit sync. And what that'll do is it'll synchronize your settings all across every image. That do that and I'll come back once that's completed for you guys. Um, we have our time-lapse edited as such. So that's how you're gonna do your kind of coloring and everything for it. We'll select everything once again, we go file export so then at this point i'd be like okay i need to pop these into the folder so today we're popping these into this one i'll usually put it to 100 because we're going to be re-exporting it again anyway in premiere and you, you know you don't want to cut down your quality so bear in mind you can do crops and stuff in these edits so if you want to do a crop in there go for it but i always use the maximum quality and then do the crop in premiere okay so that took way longer than I expected it to, but we're here. We have uh, finally exported all 460, 465 images. Um, yeah, so at this point, I usually jump across to Premiere. Um, I have a sequence set up here, 4K 25 frames a second. So what we'll do is, is we're gonna do two things. We're gonna import the original time-lapse, which I think is this one. So yeah, 1080p. 25 frames a second now this is where the fun part comes so you get your 
folder. So I put these all into this folder called JPEGs. We're just going to import. We go open the folder. We're just going to import. You select the first file, and then we're going to click image sequence. So we'll put all that into sequence. So you'll get this. So you can see here it imported default to 25 frames a second. You go to properties again, and you'll see here it's 5200 by 3467. So you get this amazing file that's absolutely monstrously big. <laughs> right, this one. And so these are only taken like a few minutes apart. So you'll see here, this is a 1080p image on a 4K shot. And this is the same scene then. Now this will run a little <laughs> chuggier. Uh, my computer's just decided no. So my main effect that I would use this for is I like the fact that I can go in, I can keyframe in positions and scales. So you have your original video, which will look all right, as I said, but in 4K, as I said, like what I would need to do on this one, I need to put it up by like 200%. So right and left, so there you go. You know, we've got, jump onto this one. You can see we've already got our final coloring on it. But what you get is, is you get this nice breathing image. You can have it move along. I'll, I'll play it over what I'm, I'm showing here now. Thanks for tuned in guys if you've made it this far. That was kind of a generic quick look into, you know, time-lapse photography and making your own time-lapses. I hope it was helpful. If there's any other details that you want to know, ask me questions below. I can make a follow-up video with more in-depth details, I suppose, on how I go through the process even more so um, when it comes to maybe planning my actual locations and shoots and that, but we'll leave that for another video. Um, again, let me know if you have any techniques that you use or any little tips that you guys use for your time lapses if you already do them. You know, you may not be on this video if you already do, but hey, I've found that watching videos of stuff that I already know, you learn little things here and there. As I would always say, thanks for watching. Uh, my name's Owen. I've been here for this wonderful time lapse video. Um, you can find out more of my stuff on my Instagram below. It's at Owen underscore Bell, uh, as well as my website that's www.ownbell.com actually check out all my time lapses and my highlight highlights reel so go take a look at those if you're not subscribed already go subscribe i've got more content coming i have plans i have actually got like loads of videos let set loads of videos set up and ready to go and again give me a thumbs up on the video if you did think it was a good video or you found something useful in it a thumbs down if you didn't comment and let me know rather than give me the thumbs down because if there's something missing i'd rather know about it than just getting the generic anyway thanks guys and have a good one i'll leave you with this time lapse now <laughs>